Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I Wrong and it's by user Thrower Ray Abandoned My Girlfriend. Am I wrong for leaving my girlfriend in a bar after I found out she spoke to her ex and didn't tell me? For context, my girlfriend says that her ex traumatized her and left her with a lot of trust issues because of his infidelity and the way she found out. He had been sleeping with multiple other people and she only found out when one of the girls reached out to her. He then ended up in a relationship with the girl who had reached out to her the day after they broke up. Because of this, I've had to deal with a lot of trust issues. Because of this, we haven't had sex despite being together for 5 months, as she wants to know I'm not just with her for that and wants to be really careful about who she sleeps with. I have also willingly let her go through my phone multiple times just to reassure her. Sometimes she doesn't even ask, I just offer when I can tell she's worrying because I have nothing to hide and I want her to feel secure. Now on to the story. I, 21 male, was out in a bar with my girlfriend, 22 female, and having a good time. We are mid-conversation, but then, out of nowhere, she gets all weird and distracted. I ask her what's wrong and she says her ex just walked in. I ask her if she wants to leave. She says no, she wants to see what he's doing in the area as he is alone and lives like 30 miles away from here. He stands at the bar and we watch him for a few minutes. I'm about to ask her if we can stop watching him when a girl walks in and goes up and they hug and orders a drink. They then like link arms and walk to a table around the corner. My girlfriend looks distraught and like she's going to start crying. I ask her if she's okay or if she's getting triggered and she says she's fine. I ask if that is one of the girls he cheated with and she says it isn't. We sit there and it's awkward for about 5 minutes. Then my girlfriend says she wants to go and talk to him. I say there's no point and to leave the past in the past. She just keeps saying I don't understand. I get a bit frustrated and ask what is there to understand and she just gets angry and goes on a rant about how he's full of crap etc etc etc. I'm like yeah well you knew that and then she says well he was saying he only wanted me and all this stuff and here he is with someone else. I'm confused and say that she can't expect him to stay single forever after their breakup and even she has moved on. That's when she says that he was saying this to her earlier that week. This is like a gut punch and I ask what the f she means. She then tells me that he had messaged her on Instagram asking for another chance but she said no. I ask why she didn't tell me and she says because she said no and it wasn't important. I ask to see the messages and she says no and starts going on about privacy etc. I remind her that she has gone through my phone multiple times and that I want to see. She says no again. I say if she doesn't show me I'll assume the worst and she reluctantly gives me her phone. I read their messages and it's sort of like she says except they were talking for hours over the course of like 3 days and even had 2 phone calls which were over half an hour long each. He tells her that he broke up with the girl he had cheated with because he wanted her back. She keeps saying no, that it's too late and that she has a boyfriend but for some reason the conversation doesn't end, they just go on and on. He's telling her about how he left his toxic job where the girls always spoke bad about her, how he cut off all his friends who said she was no good for him etc. She is saying she doesn't believe him and that she can't trust him. The last few messages is one of the calls which is a 37 minute call over Instagram. After that call he says I'll leave you alone now, it was so nice hearing your voice again and I want you to know I'm serious, I don't want anyone but you. I understand you're not in a place where you want to try again right now but just know I'll wait as long as it takes. If you need anything just call me. She replies saying thank you. I screenshot the conversation and send it to myself because I want to go back over it when I'm not drunk. I ask my girlfriend why she didn't tell me and she just says again it wasn't a big deal. I said to her that it seems like a big deal considering they were talking for hours and having long phone calls. She says that she was just seeking closure and finally standing up for herself as she didn't get to do it in the relationship. I ask why the conversation had to span multiple days and hours and she says because there was a lot to talk about. 
I asked her what was said on the phone calls, and she says just the same as the texts. She says, there's no way you're mad about this, and I just got up and just walked off, and she didn't follow me, she just let me go. I called an Uber home and left her at the bar. She blew up at me for abandoning her and says she thought I just needed to cool off. We have been arguing since the weekend about this. She says it's unsafe and reckless to leave a girl drunk alone in a bar at night and that I'm overreacting. I say she lied to me and she says she didn't lie. She just didn't think I'd care. Am I wrong here? I don't think you're wrong. Maybe the best way to go about it would be I'm leaving. If you want to ride home, come with me now or stay here. Your choice. And you should have broken up with her. This is a mess. And apparently she picked up on her cheating ex's traits because that's what she's doing to you right now. She's gaslighting you. She's lying to you. And she's looking for some sort of emotional affair apparently. I mean, really, what's the point of having these conversations with the ex if she's so over him and, you know, it's not important or whatever, then why is she so upset? Unless she's upset because she realized that she's an idiot in real time. OP, seriously, if I was in your shoes, this would be the end for me. This is a five month relationship and it's already this dramatic. It is not worth it. Just move on. And what do you guys think about OP's situation? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's check out the community comments. No spanking allowed says she still is attached to her ex. You literally did the right thing. She has issues and she isn't going to be a safe partner for anyone in the near future. Just let her be. The fact that she got bothered that he didn't want just her says you were coming in second. And no, their long talks were not closure. She's blowing smoke up your ass. Honestly, she was probably damn near going back to him during those chats. And OP responds, I don't get why she just wouldn't go back to him though. The whole thing is effing with my head. Like, on one hand, I think if she wanted him, she could have just gone back as he was asking for like three days. But on the other hand, I think, why were they talking for three days? FZUI78 says, I mean, it is unsafe to leave a girl alone and drunk at a bar. That being said, everything else that she's done is so effing wildly problematic. I normally don't suggest the nuclear option, but she's been such an incredible hypocrite and she's gaslighting you. Yuck. Run. And OP responds, she was only like a 50 minute walk from her house and her sister was picking us up anyway, so I knew she would have a ride home. Ketchup788 says, why do you think she hasn't had sex with you? So when she can take her ex back, she can say she hasn't slept with anyone else. She's not over him. And Budget Attention 9268 says, not wrong. Dude, there's a lot of background noise in your post. Let me break it down. She checked your phone constantly and tweeted you like a cheater. No trust. She said no when you asked the same from her. Hypocrite. She is obviously still hung up on her ex. Emotional stepping stone. She is obviously not attracted to you. Otherwise, she would have been intimate with you sooner, stringing you along. She did not want to leave the bar while he was there. Did not follow you out when you were in obvious distress over her actions over him. She picked him over you. She failed to tell you she was back in communication. You know damn well the calls didn't match the messages. Why repeat the same thing twice? Deceitful. You are a fool to keep her around. Drop her like a bad habit and go no contact and block her. Run. Okay, so the majority of the community agrees that OP was not wrong for leaving, but they all agree that this relationship shouldn't be happening and he needs to run. So now, let's move on to the update to see what OP did next and how this story ends. So this morning, I woke up early and couldn't get back to sleep. Today is my girlfriend's day off and I asked her to come see me as soon as she woke up. She said no. I said if she didn't, we'd have to end things. She got here about 9am. I asked for her phone and this almost started another argument. I think she could see my lack of sleep or genuine attitude of defeat and just rolled her eyes and handed it to me. She is still talking to him. She texted him that night saying she saw him and calling him a liar. He said he is just with people from his new job and sent back a picture of him with a big group of girls and boys. He assured her he still only wants her. She apologized to him. Funny, no one else came in when I was still there. So he just happened to meet the hot girl from work alone first and drink and sit with her for 45 minutes at least before anyone else joined them. 
After she got off the phone to me after our argument that night, she asked if she could call him. Two hour phone call. Sunday, a four hour phone call from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday, a call from 6 to 8 p.m. Then last night, a video call from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Which means that while I was typing this, she was on FaceTime to him for six effing hours. And in between all of this, sending each other memes, talking about old dates they went on, a bunch of inside jokes which I don't care to know the reference for, etc. She couldn't even look me in the eye. I said I had a few questions and she just said to me, Is there any point? I said, yes, there is to me. I asked her if she still had feelings for him. She said she didn't think she did, but now she isn't sure. I asked her why she didn't just end it with me. Again, she says she didn't want to unless she was sure. I asked her if the reason she hadn't slept with me is because she was saving herself for him, something a few of you suggested, and she basically effing admitted it. She said on some level it still felt like she was cheating on him. She said her therapist said that sleeping with anyone before she was absolutely ready would be harmful to her and them and that she didn't want to hurt anyone. I tell her I can't. I can't be with her as she is not ready, certainly not over him and that she has lied to me and I see what she has done as cheating. She just said, okay. She walked into my toilet and made a phone call. When she got back, I helped her get together her things she had here and then we sat and waited for her ride. It was awkward. When she went to leave, I tried to hug her goodbye, but she just said, please don't touch me and dodged it. She just looked really defeated. She went outside and wouldn't you know, her ex was waiting for her. He took her two bags, put them in the boot and they drove off. I went to message her asking if she was effing serious, but I was already blocked. You were all right, I'm an effing idiot and feel like a loser for wasting these last five months trying to be patient and kind and understanding just to get it thrown back in my face. Gonna try and lay down and get some more sleep. I don't really want to deal with this anymore. Sorry for wasting all your time. Thanks for the advice though. Well, Opie, trying to be optimistic, I think it's like a silver linings kind of update. I don't think you should have tried to hug her or, you know, try to keep in contact with her. I think you should just block her everywhere and try to forget she exists and move on with your life. And the silver lining is that you are out of that toxic relationship. It wasn't going to be a positive for you ever. It was only going to drain you. So on that note, Opie, here's wishing you the best in the future. Thanks so much for sharing and take care. And now, let's move on to the next post that also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Am I the a -hole? and it's by user expertpotato7447. Am I the a -hole for telling my roommate that I don't give an F about her boyfriend's allergies? I, 24 female, have been living with my roommate Layla, 25 female, for about 10 months. We have a two-year lease, so I really want to fix this, so we're not miserable for the next year and to start, I need to see if I'm in the wrong. Layla started dating Kyle about six months ago. Kyle has severe food allergies to shellfish, nuts and soy, as well as a lot of more mild or moderate allergies. I use nuts and soy a lot in my cooking and some occasional shrimp. At first, Lila would tell me that Kyle was coming over and I would just adjust whatever I was planning on making if it was something that would be aerialized, mostly nuts, and this was fine. He's never had any reactions at our apartment from my food. The problem is that it's slowly escalated and now they want me to not keep any ingredients in the apartment that could cause him anaphylaxis, even if I'm not actively eating or cooking it while he's over. I refused and they've both pushed back a lot on it and I snapped a little and told them I don't give an F about his allergies. I can accommodate him to an extent, but I don't care if the contents of my cabinet make him uncomfortable. He doesn't need to be near my things at all. They are being very dramatic and insisting I'm gonna kill him with my selfishness by having closed jars of nuts in the kitchen I pay to use. But I'm not going to have my diet restricted by someone who doesn't even live here. Lila isn't speaking to me at all right now and I feel a little bad now because I do understand how serious allergies are. But I also think they're overextending boundaries by telling me what I can or can't eat when he's not even here. Am I the a-hole? 
No, Opi, I don't think you're the a-hole. You're already doing something to try to accommodate him when he's over to visit. Now they don't want you to keep your stuff all the time because what, he may drop by unannounced? Look, I understand he's your roommate's boyfriend, but does he pay rent? Does he live there? No, he doesn't get to push back. This is a conversation between you and Lila, and you've reached a point of contention. You already compromised. Now they're just being entitled and pushy. Is there a solution to this? Maybe he shouldn't be visiting your apartment so often and she can go visit him. Or maybe the worst case scenario, which would of course absolutely suck, is that you just can't live with Lila anymore. Meaning that either she moves out or you need to find another place. But considering it's them, the ones that are making the problem, I'd say Lila needs to find a new place. And what do you guys think about OP's situation? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's check out the community comments. Boring Ghoul 451 says, I have a feeling the boyfriend will be around a lot more often. It has to move in unofficially if you were to remove your food items, not the a-hole. Karma Will Getcha says, Is he on the lease and paying rent? No? Then not the a-hole. You are. You live there. You have a right to live there with your food and belongings. I think it's great you're trying your best to be considerate of his allergies in your cooking, but that should be the limit. Sam Spade PI says, not the a-hole. Kyle is not on the lease and this wasn't part of the arrangement you made when you and Lila decided to live together. A reasonable ask would be to not eat or allow the allergens in the living room or Lila's bedroom so Kyle has a safe space when he comes over. I'm not saying that even if you refused that you would be an a-hole but at least to ask is reasonable. To tell you what you can and cannot eat or even have in the house whether or not he's there is overstepping. He doesn't live there and he's not on the lease. Surely Kyle lives somewhere. Why can't Layla and he hang out at his place instead of yours and avoid the danger entirely? And Opie responds, he lives with his parents. They hang out there sometimes but want more privacy so they like to be here more. So the community agrees that Opie is not the a-hole, that Kyle is not on the lease and they're overstepping by pushing this issue. So now let's move on to the update to see how the story ends. I sat down with Lila a few days after my initial post and really talked with her about why I felt her and Kyle's request was unacceptable and I laid out my biggest concerns. One, I eat mostly plants, so nuts and soy are like 50% of my protein, so my grocery bill would increase because I'd have to make it up in animal products. Who's going to pay for that? I'm not vegetarian, but I don't really want to eat like that and I definitely don't want to pay for it, so would they make up that increase? Two, I honestly didn't trust them to stop there. I already did what I felt was a reasonable accommodation and it wasn't enough. So how long till they take coconut, eggs and tomatoes from me too? And three, it was weird as F to ask me in the first place and I felt really disrespected because this is my home and I don't take second place to a guest. I can to her personally of course but that doesn't extend to the apartment. I said I would agree to continue not using his serious allergens when he was present or soon to be and that that was the line. It didn't go over well at all and Layla told me I was overreacting and I could just do it and kept talking over me when I tried to say that I wouldn't. Eventually she slipped up with the well what if he moved in and I said absolutely not and ended the conversation with her for the night. We argued in circles about it for nearly two weeks and once it was out she didn't drop it. I realized it wasn't going to get better so I did what I didn't want to do and told her that I was going to the landlord about breaking my part of the lease and she freaked out. I don't know where Kyle's money goes but apparently he doesn't have any because she was yelling about not being able to afford it on her own and he couldn't help even if he moved in. I told her that this had gone way too far and I didn't think I could be happy living here with her anymore. If it were easier for her to leave instead, that would be fine too. She was really upset and I said I wouldn't force her out or leave her suddenly on the lease alone but it was one or the other. Eventually she accepted it and decided she would move back in with her dad. That was two months ago and she's fully moved out as of this week. My childhood best friend Ali has been flip-flopping on moving to my city for forever now and me calling and saying I had a cheap open bedroom if she came right away got her to finally pull the trigger on it.
This helped Lila out because she didn't have to pay to break the lease since I agreed to cover the full rent at my own risk. Allie has stuff to tie up in our home state still, but she's already sent me half of next month's rent. I just gotta squeeze for a little while, but I'll make it. I'm super excited to see her and show her around. Plus, we've been cooking together since 4th grade, so that'll be a nice change, lol. And I can get a cat. It's been a bit of a rough couple of months, but I'm very happy with how things are looking right now, so I just wanted to share with you guys. Well OP, I think it's a really happy update. Lila's moving on to a better place and she can continue her relationship with Kyle away from you and your allergens and you get a roommate that you really love because it's your best friend so hopefully things work out for you guys great. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.